Welcome back to The Lost Constellations. I'm John Barentine, Director of Public Policy at IDA. Throughout International Dark Sky Week 2020, we've explored constellations that once appeared on star charts, but that were discarded in the early 20th century in a process that gave us the night sky recognized by modern astronomers. Today's lost constellation, Quadrans Muralis, is the first of two featured in this series that in a way honors astronomy itself, taking as its figure a piece of apparatus that was for centuries the most precise way of measuring the night sky. And it follows a tradition established in the century before it that saw articles of the arts and sciences commemorated with their own constellations, many of which still appear on star charts today. This constellation was proposed at the end of the 18th century by the French astronomer Jérôme de Lalande to make use of otherwise anonymous and faint stars in the space adjacent to the classical constellations Hercules, Draco, and Buotis. It first appeared on a star chart in 1795 in an edition of John Flamsteed's Atlas Celestis. The publisher of that edition, John Fortin, argued that it was right to invent a new constellation in this space because, 40 years earlier, his fellow Frenchman, Nicolas Louis de la had done precisely the same thing during a four year sojourn observing the night sky at the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. Fortin wrote, quote, by his example, we thought to devote space in the Northern Hemisphere to the costly instrument used in the observations of 30,000 stars, that is to say, the greatest monument of astronomy. And future astronomers, taking advantage of this tremendous work, without a doubt will retain this constellation of their own to recall its memory. All of these new constellations add even greater value to our atlas." Unquote. In turn, Lalande took his cue from predecessors who formed new constellations in the 17th and 18th centuries to honor scientific devices. The Polish astronomer Johannes Hevelius introduced one in the northern night sky representing a navigational sextant. And the Frenchman de la Caille invented seven such constellations in the southern night sky a mechanical air pump, a chemical furnace, a pendulum clock, a microscope, an octant, a reticle, and a telescope. All of these constellations are still found on modern star charts. Le Lens figure represents a device called a mural quadrant, deriving its name from the Latin word muris, meaning wall. A quadrant is a quarter of a circle used to measure angles. And in the era before the telescope, Astronomers use quadrants to determine the angular separation between objects in the night sky. But small tabletop devices, like the one shown here, were not good at measuring small angles very well. The precision of a quadrant scales according to its radius, so very large devices were required in order to reliably measure very small angles. These were often several meters in diameter, made of metal or wood, and needed structural support in order to prevent them from collapsing under their own weight. Sometimes they were even incorporated into observatories as architectural features. The use of mural quadrants as cutting edge scientific instruments began to decline in the 17th and 18th centuries as telescopes improved. The constellation quadrants muralis persisted for another century, gradually vanishing from star charts through the 19th century. At the same time that the modern constellation boundaries were being finalized in 1930, it was split into two by the redrawn boundary between Draco, the dragon, and Buotis, the herdsman. But this lost constellation lives on in the language of modern day astronomy in the name of the Quadrantids meteor shower, which peaks every year on the 4th of January. As meteor showers take their names from the constellations from which their meteors appear to radiate, it is unsurprising that the Quadrantids receive their name at a time when this constellation still commonly appeared on star charts. To find Quadrants Muralis, draw an imaginary line along two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper, Zeta and Epsilon Ursae Majoris, but not the star Eta at the end of the handle, and the one in the bowl, Delta Ursae Majoris. These point the way to Quadrants Muralis. Continuing this line to the east, it first intersects with the fourth magnitude star Theta Buotis. About equal distant and further to the east are a group of fifth and sixth magnitude stars that make up this lost constellation. Join me again tomorrow when we'll look at an obscure southern night sky figure that commemorates a cultural object now most closely associated with Australia. <laughs>